Hi, I'm Dr. Kerwolder. The title of this Autism Biomedicentials video is titled, Is Cerebral Folate Deficiency a Problem for All Individuals with Autism? So this video is sponsored by Autism Recovery System. Autism Recovery System is a biomedical education website. It's a membership website for parents and caregivers, of individuals on the autism spectrum or other special needs. So you can go to autismrecoverysystem.com for more information or email us at autismsystem at gmail.com. Now within the Autism Recovery System website, there are a number of sections and resources, videos, articles. There's also a question and answer form where you can post questions to me on an ongoing basis. There's also a very in-depth six module biomedical course called Autism Biomedicentials. Here's the disclaimer for this video, understanding that this information is for educational purposes only. So in many of my other videos, I've talked about the four pillar approach that I developed many years ago, which was looking at dietary intervention, foundational supplements, digestive system assessment, and then methylation support. And then we have this other interventions box, so to speak. And this is actually where cerebral folate deficiency would fall into, meaning that what's in this other intervention box isn't necessarily something that's not valuable, it's extremely valuable. But generally what we try to do is implement these other four pillars first before venturing into this area. And there's a lot of things that are involved in this section. One of those being cerebral folate defect, one of those being cerebral folate deficiency. So an article that came out a number of years ago by Dr. Rosendahl and Fry looking at cerebral folate deficiency in autism. And what they found was that a subsection of kids actually had issues with cerebral folate deficiency where either the levels were overall low or they're not able to transport folate into the brain and nervous system. And so cerebral folate deficiency is typically a transportation problem. We can't get the active form of folate called 5-methyl uh, tetrahydrofolate into the brain. It can't cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, it's interesting. There are other tissues in the body that are dependent on a transporting mechanism for folate. So it's not just the brain. It's also the intestines, the kidneys, the lungs. But it's the brain, obviously, that shows up most prevalently uh, with cerebral folate deficiency. And so what's happening is it's an autoimmune problem in most cases. So the immune system is generally affecting this transporting mechanism to some degree. It's forming blocking antibodies, basically, or it can cause binding antibodies. These are chemicals, proteins produced by the immune system that interact and go after this transporting mechanism. And that then leads to a lack of folate to get into the brain. So it's not that a, a individual with cerebral folate deficiency is deficient in folate. They could be getting enough of it through their diet and it's in their blood. They just can't transport it into the, uh, into the brain. So in many individuals with cerebral folate deficiency, cow milk seems to be a triggering mechanism for this autoimmune reaction. In fact, cow milk is a highly reactive protein in our diet. And so in most cases with cerebral folate deficiency, it's recommended to actually eliminate cow milk. And this honestly could be another reason why some individuals with autism get benefit from a casein-free diet. Now, it's suspected that other types of milks might cause a problem, you know, camel milk, for example, or goat milk, maybe. Clearly, it is known that cow milk is a problem. Now, there's other issues, right? There could be other things that might bind or interfere with the folate transporting mechanism across the blood brain barrier. That could be folic acid, which is found in many supplements, a lack of cobalamin, what's also called a lack of sometimes methyl B12, mitochondrial problems. Interestingly, mitochondria are needed to help the transporter function. And then inflammation. Inflammation could actually affect the mechanism as well. 
So the folate receptor test looks at blocking antibodies and binding antibodies. If you block the receptor for folate, well, you're gonna just basically block the ability for the receptor to, to bind to folate to get it into the brain. If you form an antibody that might bind to the receptor, it might alter its function slightly, but there may be some transfer. It's not, it's not like the system is completely shut down. One thing to keep in mind about this test too, is that this test isn't necessarily 100% proving cerebrofolate deficiency. The only way to do that would actually be to measure folate within the cerebral spinal fluid, which requires a specific procedure called a spinal tap. But what you're getting with the folate receptor test is if there is a blocking antibody or a binding antibody, it's showing that there's some dysfunction to the transporter of folate. So it's very likely occurring. And like many things, it's probably more of a spectrum problem than there's no folate or there's um, or abundant folate. So keep that in mind. This test is not defining with absolute certainty a a cerebral folate deficiency state. It's showing a immune reaction to the transporting mechanism to get folate into the brain. And this test actually comes from Iliad Neuroscience. You can go to iliadneuro.com for more information for the folate receptor antibody test. It is a blood test. So who needs therapy? Well, evidence really points to the fact that all sorts of infants who manifest with signs and symptoms, that could be irritability, restlessness, poor sleep. If there's a seizure disorder, they should, individuals should be assessed for sure with this test. Balance issues, low muscle tone. So it, that could include a lot of kids, honestly. So it's, it's one of these tests that's important to consider at some point to have done. And, but also to understand what the test is showing us. Okay, so clearly if there's a, a seizure disorder for sure, severe learning disabilities, it's one of these things to check at some point in an autism assessment. If you have any questions about this information, you can always reach out to me through the autismrecoverysystem.com website. And then remember also within the autism recovery system website is that course Autism Biomed Essentials where we go into this as well as many other topics in more detail. Autism recovery system at gmail.com if you have any questions. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Autism Recovery System. Thank you.